So hi there, I'm Xiaodo, I'm a professional rapper, manga author, occasional ninja. I trained and lived in China for a little bit in Shaolin Kung Fu. I make anime inspired music and rap in English and Japanese and do various nerdy things and get paid for it. I've only been here about an hour or so, but it's nice to see familiar faces and people I recognize. And it's nice to see conferences getting back up and running. You know, I think this is incredibly important. My only um, lament is always that there should be more music artists here rather than industry uh, professionals because it's this kind of knowledge but more specifically these kind of networking opportunities that are so necessary for music artists because they, they, they could turn into massive opportunities later on. So I think music artists need to get into the habit of attending music conferences not just for the knowledge but for the meetings and for the greetings. <laughs> I think my journey has been different because I've always staunchly been myself and that has both worked for and against me. Um, but, you know, I've never really fitted into a particular scene or a particular way of doing things. All I've known is that I've wanted my own independence and control over my creative direction so that pretty much meant a label wasn't completely right for me uh, but it also meant that I had to learn many things myself and how to do things and had to make many mistakes and waste a lot of time doing things you know so now with that knowledge I'm able to capitalize on it in a way that I think some artists couldn't do because um, you know there, there is a there's perhaps an expectation from them to do a certain thing in a certain way I think my fans expectation from me is to do me and be happy with it and anything that comes out from me is going to be of a certain caliber quality and will have a certain level of love and dedication to it in terms of why um, i get picked for these panels i was thinking that as i was sitting on the panel i think probably familiarity people know what to expect from me they know that they will get eloquence and knowledge and an artist who knows what he is talking about um that's not to say that there aren't other artists out there like that it just so happened that I got in at the right time and people, I'm an easy pick for a lot of festivals and conferences because it makes sense and they know what they're going to get. But, um, you know, that's, that's not to say I'm the only person who could speak on these subjects or that I'm the best person on all of these subjects. But I am always very honoured to be asked to do these things because I, I am very passionate about sharing knowledge and helping the next generation of artists and mentor artists as well in my spare time. So uh, this is something that I, I pride myself on knowing and I think... Um, there's just a different aspect that I can give. And just to finish on the point, I think that often with these kind of conferences, it tends to be oversaturated with music industry professionals, whereas this is the music business and we need to be hearing from the artists a lot more and we do need far more artist representation in these sorts of things. So I, I, I like to think that I'm playing my part in at least being one artist that is giving a viewpoint, an alternative viewpoint from, say, the label person or the publishing person or the manager or the booking agent, so on and so forth, you know? During my journey, I feel I had some unofficial mentors. Um, Cerasi, a fantastic artist, being one of them who kind of semi-took me under his wing and explained certain things to me and took me along to shows. But it wasn't the case of, okay, sit down, let's talk about this and let me explain this and X, Y, and Z to you. It was more, hey, come along to the show. And I, me being me, I would sit there and watch and ask questions and so on and so forth. But I'm aware that not every artist is like that. So... I do sit down with artists and have sessions, like our sessions with them, and we'll talk about whatever it is they feel they want to talk about, and I will help them with the benefit of my knowledge being further on in my career. And I think I mentor because I know how difficult it is to get to a stage where you can make a living from your music without much support or guidance and having to kind of guesswork your way through it. I know firsthand how difficult that is, so I would like to help as many artists as possible by taking away some of that stress and some of that heartache, you know? So I think if there were anything that I would really love to not have to do and wish it wasn't as relevant, it's probably just social mediaing. I find having to, when I go to the gym and I'm thinking, oh, what content can I get? What, what exercise can I film myself? How heavy a weight can I lift so that I can show off online? It all feels really vapid to me, but it's part of the... It's part of the branding, it's part of the journey, it's part of keeping your fans entertained and engaged in what you're doing, especially in lieu of music and in between release cycles, because I, I like to release 
when the music is ready. So in between that, I've got to, of course, keep people entertained and keep myself at least somewhat relevant within their lives. So if I could get away with not having to do social media, I would very much enjoy that. But aside from that, most of it, I really do like and um, I, I find it fun. You know, gaming, the manga, anime-related stuff, my music, um, events, talking at things like this, performing, traveling. I've started a second channel recently called Shall Go, which is more dedicated to my other interests, such as gaming, such as traveling, cooking, martial arts, uh, training, that kind of stuff. And I think all of that is an aspect of my personality. It's an aspect of my artistry. And I don't think you can separate those out. I think as an artist, it is absolutely worth being multifaceted and having more interest than just having great music because it allows your fans to experience you in lots of different ways and to connect with you in lots of different ways and maybe fall even deeper in love with your music because they share similar interests to you on mul across multiple different things. <laughs> I think it's necessary not only just because of a shared interest perspective, but because you need to diversify your income. It's not sensible or even potentially viable to just make new money from music and that's it. You know, you, I think you really need, especially if you're in the live field, it's even, even more tenuous at the moment. So I think that having lots of different musical avenues, sorry, uh, financial avenues is important and especially if it, if it ties in with your creativity. So as I said, for me, it's music, it's manga, it's gaming, it's live events, speaking events, um, as well as a whole host of other stuff. But, you know, I think as long as I find it personally interesting and I'm enjoying it, then it, it feels authentic to me. I don't really do stuff that I don't believe in. The, yes, so I do game a lot, and I know that you know I play Super Smash Bros. to a very high level. Uh, but that would always be my first choice of game for a Nintendo Switch. The thing for me is I always kind of played Nintendo. Um, I played Super Smash Bros. in my spare time just as, a, as an unwind session. Then when I started to understand Twitch and how to live stream, it made sense to play it on stream because it fulfilled several roles and ticked several boxes. It allowed me to connect with my fans on a more personal level. It made a little bit of extra money doing something that I would have done anyway. So getting paid to do something that I would have done anyway is, you know, that's a life hack, you know. And um, it, it lets me show the world that actually I am a badder man at Smash Bros and you don't want to play me. And now the, the general running theme is that Xiao is dope at Smash. So that's also good. But um, in terms of other games, um, as we were discussing earlier, Zelda Majora's Mask, I think it's a fantastic game. I'm on a, I'm on a replay of that at the moment. I'm doing a 100% run and I'm very much enjoying it. I think it's an excellent game. Uh, I just played um, Metroid Dread, also a very, very good game as well. Um, I, I mainly play Nintendo Switch just because I own that console. And if I bought a PS, what are we on now, 5? Or the new Xbox, I don't know if I'd have time to make music because I'd want to play games a lot. So I restrict myself to just Nintendo Switch because the games on there, there's like four good games and that's about it. So yeah, um, that at least allows me to keep on track of the things I'm meant to be doing. Uh, but yeah, the, the new Mario Pro Strikers or whatever they call it, uh, they're trying to get away with calling it soccer. It's not soccer, it's football. If you kick it with your foot, it's football. American football is actually called handball or carry ball or carry egg. And I'm going to make that a thing. Um, but yeah, so that game, I, I used to play that on Nintendo Wii, I think, and that was really good. So they're bringing that out on Switch and that should be pretty decent. I think Mario Party is also very good, but I haven't played that one. Uh, aside from that, Elden Ring, I think we'll probably get Game of the Year. I haven't played it, but I've watched a Let's Play of it. Um, and generally, I think if you don't game, there's a lot of amazing YouTubers who play games for you and you just sit there and watch. Um, oh, God of War, the new God of War. Well, the newest God of War. Fantastic game as well. Yes, yeah, so I watched Grand Pooh Bear quite a bit. Um, I watched um, Joe Grind, Joey's Fun House. Um, I watched me, of course, at Shadow Music. Uh, who else... I watch a lot of Smash, Smash Bros, so like pro Smash players. So uh, I just watched the Summit and um, what, was the, what was the latest one? Uh, I can't remember what the, what the latest tournament was, but shout out MK Leo, best player in the world, absolute legend. Um, so yeah, I watch a lot of high level Smash Bros play because then I just sit there and I'm like, oh, okay, what tech can I pick up and how can I take this to my elite Smash and, 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 and body people some more? So yeah. 
Um, what advice would I give to a 15-year-old version of myself? Buy Bitcoin, um, invest in YouTube, Apple, and Tesla. Any money you make, put 15% of it in a different account and do not touch it. And that's just your in case stuff happens money. Um, continue to enjoy life. Things will get better and, they, and you will get to a good level and you will be happy. So just keep pushing forward and, and be yourself um, and enjoy the process of being yourself. Enjoy the journey and don't worry so much about the destination. Um, and yeah, I think those would be the main things I would say. Yeah, I would learn Japanese earlier. And thank you so much to Sound and Vision for having me. Thank you to The Floor for the interview. And thank you to PRS for having me on the panel. Now let me bring back a hook and catch the coin. You better tell that boy. I got the coin.